Good morning again and rise and shine. I hope uh, as always that you slept well and that you are ready to uh, greet the day with the Lord and be in his word this morning. Uh, the last time that we met, I started a two-part series, which will end today, of different things to encourage you in your daily walk with God while you're reading and studying his word and and um, and having your prayer time with God. I'm just going to review real quick the first five that we touched on and that is the first one if you remember is I am loved and we referred to John 3 16 because there's no no better verse um, there's lots of other verses that talks about God loving us, but that shows a demonstration of God's willingness to love us with total abandon by sending his only begotten son. <clears throat> the second thing was, I am forgiven. And it was because God sent his only begotten son and that we have accepted that gift of life of forgiveness that we are forgiven and the verse that uh, i used there was matthew 26 verses 27 and 28. the third thing is i am chosen and um, it's great to know that god has you know many are called and few are chosen and you've been chosen to be a warrior for Christ. So that's why, uh, that's one reason I'm doing this, to encourage you, a fellow warrior in Christ. And the scripture reference for that is 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. The fourth one was God's word is a lamp to my feet. And... Um, the verse for that was Psalm 119, 105. We cannot be warriors unless we are in God's word, which is how we are able to keep our light, our lamp lit and be that beacon up on the hill. The fifth thing was we've been given armor. And the verses for that, of course, um, is Ephesians 6 verses 10 through 18 and um, I also showed uh, what I like to read in the morning it's it's a, um, a, a poem I guess you could say um, about each piece of armor that I put on and why I put it on and if you check back to um, my last uh, posting on Rise and Shine you'll be able to take a screenshot of that so now let's go on from there. The sixth thing. So there's five that we're going to finish up with today to make a total of 10. The sixth thing is the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. How many of you have been, after you've, after you've read his word and, and, or maybe before you have your prayer time, and there have been many times I have simply been on my knees right there. That's my chair, and I have a little pillow I put on the floor. Um, my knees aren't great, but I have been praying and just unable to get the words out of what I want to express, whether it be expressing my love for God, um, my unworthiness, um, my thankfulness, my prayer for someone else, standing in the gap for someone else and pleading for them, regardless of what it is, there have been times when I simply am overcome with tears and, and can't pray. I can't get the words out. And that is where the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. And we're going to use Romans Eight, verses 26 and 27. Let me read those verses and that will help to make uh, more sense, I believe, of this. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we, 
We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind and the spirit. The Holy Spirit knows the intent of our heart and knows how we want to pray, but just can't get it out. And so the Holy Spirit, as it says here, he intercedes with groans that words cannot express. To me, that is so comforting to know that God will get the highest possible glory that he can get while I'm praying, even if I'm unable to, to vocally, and I like to pray out loud, to vocally pray, the Spirit will take over for me. And the Spirit, because he knows my heart, will take over in a way that that just I know will glorify God. And um, so that is very important to know. If you simply break down in tears while you're crying, it's okay. The Spirit will take over for you. The next one, number seven, number two for today, but number seven in total, is he who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. And that is, um, we're using 1 John chapter 4, uh, verse 4. <clears throat> now, I'm using reading straight from the Bible today rather than having written out the verse or, or speaking from memory because I want you to understand how important it is to be in God's word, to be in his word. So um, 1 John 4, verse 4, You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And of course, we know that the enemy is the one who is in the world and our God is greater He's greater than the one who is in the world. And the one who is greater than the one that is in the world is in us. Is that not amazing? Is that not just... And it goes back to the first one. I am loved because we accepted Christ. God is within us. We have the power. Just wonderful. The third one for today is the Lord is my help. And that is Psalm 121. And that's the entire Psalm. And let me get to that. <coughs> and I'm actually, I'm going to read it in um, this version, which is uh, the New International. And then I really like the way it reads in the Living Bible. So I'm going to read it from there as well. So Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Hallelujah. I love this. I love this. Indeed, um... He who watches over you will not slumber. We don't ever have to worry about whether our God is asleep or 
or taken a vacation, he is always right there watching over us. Now, let me read it for you in the Living Bible. <clears throat> and I really, it, it's much shorter, but I, I like um, I like the way it reads. Shall I look to the mountain gods for help? No, my help is from Jehovah, who made the mountains and the heavens too. He will never let me stumble, slip, or fall, for he is always watching, never sleeping. Jehovah himself is caring for you. He is your defender. He protects you day and night. He keeps you from all evil and preserves your life. He keeps his eye upon you as you come and go and always guard you. I love that first part. Shall I look to the mountain gods for help? No, my help is from Jehovah who made the mountains. That's just, I, I really like the way the Living Bible um, translates some of, um, some of those verses. It's great. So the Lord is my help. That's that one. And then the ninth one, or the fourth one for today, the ninth one is praise silences the enemy. Praise silences the enemy. And that is Psalm 8. Let me get there. Psalm 8, verses 1 and 2. And hopefully, I should have invited you to grab your Bibles. Um, hopefully, you're, you're turning to these verses with me. Uh, so Psalm 8, verses 1 and 2. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me grab a sip real quick here. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens from the lips of children and infants. You have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. Praise to silence the enemies and the foe. And you notice it says from the lips of children and infants. How many times do you see the, the little babies, uh, the one and two year olds just singing at the top of their lungs? They're joyful, they're singing. They are warding off the evil one because they're, they're just singing away, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. And they're just singing it away. So we are to be as the children. That's just great. And then we're going to turn to Romans 8, 28 for the last uh, for the last of these 10, and that is God is working it all out for my good. Romans 8, 28. And of course, earlier we, we read Romans 8, 26 and 27. So we're going to continue on from there. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to to his purpose. So God is working everything out. We need simply to trust and obey, to stay in his word, to stay in his word, to stay kneeling, praying on our knees. So I had a song lined up, but I'm short on time. So Let's do this. Let's sing together. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus 
loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Just be singing that all day. You won't be bothered by the enemy at all. You'll be warding off his attacks because praise silences the enemies. I hope that you have an awesome day walking around, just singing choruses, praising God. That's it for me today with the 10. So if you check back at the last, uh, the last uh, taping that I had, and then this uh, will finish up the 10 to encourage you while you're having your quiet time and your prayer time with God. Have a great day. I'll see you next time on Rise and Shine.